Hi everyone and welcome to the Free Range Diva. Thank you so much for coming back and spending some time with me today. I want to talk to you today about cleaning uh, in the age of coronavirus. Do you have to resort to things like bleach and Lysol uh, in order to get your house really, really clean and kill viral and other germs? I don't think so. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you want to know more, then just keep watching. Uh, I don't know how, how I'm going to get through this today. I'm a little bit out of sorts, feeling a little, um, I guess, not hopeful, discouraged about what's going on in relation to COVID-19 and, and what's happening here in the United States. I live in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County. And uh, at the time that I am filming this, our numbers have been surging and they've only recently announced that they are cautiously optimistic the last few days. The case numbers at least have stayed uh, about the same. So that's where we are here. Uh, so we're still masking and yes, we are still being, being really careful to wash our hands and disinfect where we can. So. Let's talk about disinfecting and cleaning. The first uh, products, where's the other one? The first products that I want to show you, uh, recently the FDA has um, approved several products that will kill COVID-19. And one of them was products that have an active ingredient called Thymol, T-H-Y-M-O-L. And it's made from the oil of thyme, thyme seeds, or, or the thyme plant somehow. Anyway, the point is, is that this stuff kills COVID. And so there is a company called Clean Well that has a line of products with Thymol that are disinfectants. And uh, of course, as soon as that announcement was made, they recommended Clean Well uh, on the FDA's website. Everything sold out, uh, clean, uh, but Clean Well if you can find any of their brand products and uh, they are the disinfectant type, then you can use definitely pick up that if you can find it. But Cleanwell also owns seventh generation and they have put their Thymol disinfectant uh, active ingredient in uh, seventh generation's disinfectant cleaner. So this one is the disinfectant spray. I recently saw uh, several cans of this at Sprouts. So after being sold out for a very long time, uh, it seems that it's starting to get back on the shelves. Now we've had this one uh, for about a year. My mother bought it and then didn't know how to open it. So she stuck it on a shelf where I keep like paint supplies, paint thinner and stuff like that. So I just happened to find it when I was looking for something else. And I thought, oh my God, we struck gold. Uh, because yes, uh, this is their spray-on disinfectant. You can use this as a cleaner, but if you want to use it as a disinfectant, you have to clean your area first, which is always recommended that you use an all-purpose cleaner to clean whatever area it is first, and then go in and spray the area down with the disinfectant spray. And in this case, they suggest that you leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes or until it dries down, whatever comes first, but you don't wipe this off. I also found on the, the shelves at Sprouts this. This is 7th Generation's Disinfecting Bathroom Cleaner, and it's the same idea. You clean the area first. This has the Time All, and you can see down here it has the Clean Well logo, as does this. Uh, they both have the Clean Well logo. So this has the active ingredient. This is approved by the FDA, and uh, this says that it kills 99.99% .99 of germs. And you use this exactly the same way, clean first, then spray this, spray the area down with this, and you leave it, leave it until it dries. Or you can wipe it off after about 10 minutes. Let me just double check that time. This one says you can leave it on for 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes, and then uh, let it air dry or wipe it down, whatever comes first. I, also, if you want to use this as a cleaner, you absolutely can. You just use it like you would any other uh, all-purpose cleaner. But because these sprays are so hard to get and because we want to kill germs, uh, it's recommended that I recommend that you use something else to clean with and then use this as a spray disinfectant. And when it comes to cleaning, I have uh, 
This, this is my homemade DIY disinfectant cleaner, or at least it's not really a disinfectant cleaner because it doesn't have enough active ingredient in it, but this is a really good all-purpose cleaner that will kill most germs, although likely not COVID-19 germs. The recipe for this is you get a quart bottle, you put in a quarter of a cup of uh, alcohol, I used 70% in this, and then you uh, put in about a tablespoon of dish soap and, and then fill the bottle up the rest of the way with water. And I use this to, all over the kitchen to clean, bathroom, whatever. Uh, I put a little bit of essential oil in here. I put a lemon essential oil in it to give it a little bit of a lemon fragrance, but you don't have to. Uh, you can just go straight with the recipe. And uh, this will get everything clean and will also kill those kinds of germs that are left behind by, you know, food germs. And then you can follow up after you've cleaned with this with the disinfectant spray. Uh, I also have this. Uh, recently I talked about Zion Health has a bar soap with uh, the active ingredient of thieves oil. And thieves oil has been proven to be an antibacterial and there are uh, videos here on YouTube where they show how using thieves oil on bacteria works almost as well as bleach. So <laughs> this is also, you just use, put this on your sponge. It's a bar soap, so it's a little more eco-friendly. And you just put it on your sponge and then clean off whatever, or your rag or whatever you're using, and clean off your area with the, with the soap. Uh, this is also good for washing your hands and um, is very mild and gentle. And obviously, it doesn't have a lot of the um, nasties that a regular conventional bar soap would have. So speaking of alcohol, alcohol is making an appearance in stores again, so I'm able to pick up 70% as well as 91%. This is great for using in your homemade DIY cleaners because it's obviously got a higher concentration. This, I keep in a spray bottle, and this I can spray as an emergency hand sanitizer directly on my hands. Um, I will keep a bottle in my car and I'm going to show you what I use that for uh, in a second. But yeah, I do keep a bottle, a spray bottle like that of 70% alcohol in my car uh, for two reasons. Also making an appearance in stores again is hand sanitizer wipes. Uh, so you can get those and the way that I use them is once a day I wipe down everything that gets touched a lot. So remote controls phones, um, the, the uh, spigots on the bathroom sink, um, anything, door handles, anything that I can think of where, you know, hands have been uh, a lot. And that way, once a day, you know that everything that, that really is a germ factory is, uh, gets a little bit cleaner, especially like your phones. They can, you know, bacteria builds up there. They can give you acne, to, you know, just from holding the phone to your ear like this. So it's good to get that phone clean uh, every single day. And then the final thing that I want to talk about that you can clean and reuse are your surgical and N95 masks. Now, most people can't get them and the cloth ma masks that you can wash are fine for keeping the germs on you and but it only works obviously if other people uh, mask wear masks as well uh, which here in Southern California seems to be a problem it's interesting because California is a huge state uh, I don't know how many square miles, but um, it's almost as if you can divide it into three separate sections. There's Northern California, Central uh, California, which has is more agriculture, but still has the, like the state capital and several other big cities in it. And then Southern California, a very densely populated area. Los Angeles County uh, has been leading the surge in cases. And public health officials, our county public health officials here, are kind of at a loss to explain why there are a lot of, of um, behaviors that can contribute to the spread of coronavirus. But trying to get 95% mask compliance, I think, uh, might be a big, you know, the, the, a big contributing factor. Some communities uh, surrounding LA have mandatory, well, all of the county has mandatory mask 
mandates. Uh, but some cities that are surround us, like Glendale, um, Manhattan Beach, West Hollywood, West LA, they have enforcement and they have stiff fines for appearing in public without a mask. And I think if you want to get 95% compliance anywhere in this country, you're going to have to mandate and you're going to have to have enforcement. The county, uh, our, our county uh, public official looks like she's aged 10 years in the last two months. They are working so hard to try and get this thing under control. Um, the county official from the county directly to our south, which shall not be named, uh, resigned because she was getting vicious and vile death threats to the point that she couldn't take it anymore against her family as well as herself. Our county public health official has also been getting death threats. Um, there have been, I think our, the governor has been, uh, has, has had 12 different lawsuits filed against him to, um, reverse the mass, the statewide uh, closures and mask mandates, many of them coming from the county to our south, which shall not be named. Um, there are people in that same county that have had protests, unmasked protests, and uh, businesses that have said masks definitely not required or masks forbidden. Um, it's been quite a wild ride. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the thing about California is that, that we are supposed to be very tolerant of everybody and now it's coming back to really uh, impact us negatively because in those counties where people are fighting to keep from, you know, they feel like it's, their, it's a violation of their freedoms, their civil rights. Uh, and I really want to hear them get up in court and argue uh, for their freedom to infect other people with a potentially fatal disease because that is what's at stake here. And they can scream about it being a hoax all they want to, but, the, but hospitals in that same county are filling up and the death toll in that same county is rising. So I didn't mean to get off on that tangent, but uh, this, is, this is why I've just like, I've had it up to here, you know, with people. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, if you are someone who, I said all that to say this, if you are someone who has a, a medical condition that puts you at higher risk or you're older uh, and you just want to protect yourself, um, there are surgical masks. The one that I have here, you cannot get unless you are medical professional, but you may likely be able to get it, get one from your doctor. This is not an N95. My mother actually has one of those. Uh, these are antiviral face masks. So they do exist. These block 99.99% of viruses and other bacterial uh, pathogens. And they are supposed to be one-time use, but, you know, <laughs> you can't get those. I've had the, this box for years. Uh, long before this, I used this to protect myself uh, from dust particles when they get to be too much. Yeah, so we, so I happen to have this box here, but uh, we don't know how long this is going to go on, and so um, you're, you know, you can't afford to just use one once and throw it away. Is what I'm getting at. However, according to the CDC and Johns Hopkins and several other uh, hospitals and public health um, experts, you can reuse these if you disinfect them properly. So um, it has been recommended, first of all, when you wear this and you take it off, when you wear this and you take it off, make sure that you remove it by the handles. Do not touch this part of the mask because any pathogen that you may have come into contact with that was blocked by this mask is now going to be here on the front. And if you touch it, you are liable to, and go to your face, you are likely to transfer that to your face. So you want to <clears throat> just either sanitize. When I wear these, it's usually out shopping or something. So I will sanitize my hands uh, after I leave the store or wherever it was, and then remove the mask, preferably outside the car, um, give it a spray with my 
uh, alcohol, 70% alcohol spray. I'll spray the whole thing with that. And then it is recommended that you put it somewhere like uh, a, a paper bag or somewhere where it can be contained, but that still has airflow because you want to let this dry out for a couple of days before you use it again. If it's a situation where I have several places to go, like I go to the grocery store and then the bank and then, you know, somewhere else. And so I'm in and out of the car. Um, I will, when I get back in the car, same thing, sanitize my hands, give it a spritz and put it either on the dashboard in the sun or somewhere in, in a bag, but have the bag open so that I can take it out and use it again, uh, at the next stop. And then the final stop, I will give it the full spritz and and uh, put it in a bag. I put it on the dashboard so that it can not only dry out but also get sunlight. So, um, huh, let me think. Is there anything else? <laughs> what else can I say? What else should I say? And wear your mask correctly. This is not correct. This is this is not correct. Anything that, any pathogen that's on the outside of the mask, you're breathing in and you're also breathing out. So wear your mask correctly, like so. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna close today by saying to those of you who live in uh, an area of the country where COVID is, is uh, very low, you are so, so fortunate. Be very grateful and be diligent. Keep masking, keep distancing, and uh, keep washing your hands. For those of you that live in like the Northeast who has battled this thing back already and are now living an almost normal life, congratulations, you did it. You are amazing, strong people, and I know you're going to keep yourself strong and safe. Remember, we live in a country where anybody can travel over any state border at any time. So until we can get to the point where that sort of thing, we, I mean, it would take a federal mandate literally to shut down the country that way. And of course, we're not going to do that. So you have to do even, even if it seems like everything is quiet and safe right now, you still have to be vigilant and protect yourself. And for the rest of you, if you happen to live in one of those 21 states that have been declared a hot spot, including this one, um, stay safe, stay strong, stay committed, because the COVID is not going to go away. It wants you to slip up. It wants you to decide, you know what, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. It wants that. That's what it wants. It wants to find a host and replicate until it destroys the host or the host destroys it, and then it is going to replicate again. This is real. There are people that here uh, I've seen on the news uh, a man who w was about 50 years old who uh, survived but when he left the hospital, all of his fingers had been amputated. I mean, he said, he, I'm never going to be the same again. This disease is not playing around. Um, another young man who was 30 years old, who went to Spain in March, came back and was in the hospital for 150 days, for almost five months. He battled his way back. But when he left the hospital, uh, he was emaciated. He had lost most of his uh, muscle mass and was on oxygen. And so although the hospital part of the battle was over, he's still going to have months and months and months of a battle in, ahead of him. So the only thing that you can do is to be responsible, protect others by wearing your mask, protect yourself by washing and, and um, distancing, and uh, in six months, maybe I will do a follow-up and we can all be celebrating and doing wonderful things together again, but masked, but at least we'll be free to do most of what it is we want to do. So until I uh, see you again in my next video, I want to thank you again for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you've done that. If you haven't, please do, because uh, I'd love to uh, see you again and talk to you again. 
And uh, yeah, until I see you in that video, I'm wishing you a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Take good care of yourselves, and I will talk to you again very, very soon. Bye, everybody.